Hey, it's Chris, and in this video, we're going to talk about cold water swimming for triathletes. So we're not talking about water that is literally freezing here, but water that is uncomfortably cold, especially for us triathletes who tend to have lower amounts of body fat and therefore less insulation. And so we're going to look at what cold water is. We're going to look at how to acclimatize and what techniques we can use to deal with that. And we're going to look at equipment as well. So first off, let's start with well, what's the definition of cold water? It's pretty complex because it depends on distances and national body. So let's jump over to the slides and it'll just be easier for me to present it there. So let's briefly go look at that. Let's briefly go through what we mean when we're talking about cold water. So if you don't care about this bit and want to skip it, you can do so using the chapter markers below but I'll go through a bunch of the different federations. So for British triathlon, it depends on the distance you're swimming as to when it's cold enough that wetsuits become mandatory. So at a standard distance, it's 14 degrees. If the water temperature is below that, you have to wear a wetsuit. Between 14 and 22, you can choose to wear a wetsuit, and you probably should because it'll make you faster. And then above that, it's forbidden. And that temperature rises slightly as we move up from standard distance to full distance. It's also worth noting that the swim distance gets capped. So if the water is below 11 degrees, then there's just no swimming at all. And anywhere between 11 and 14, the maximum there is a maximum distance that will shorten the race distance. So at 13 degrees, even if you're doing a full distance triathlon, they'll cap it at 2000 meters. And then there's a bunch of rules that say what you can do. So gloves are not allowed. Socks are allowed, but only when wetsuits are mandatory. So if the water is below 14 degrees, you can have socks. If it's in that 14 to 22 range, you can't have socks. You can always wear multiple swim caps. And the maximum thickness of your wetsuit must be 5 millimeters. And we'll talk about why that's relevant when we talk about layering later in this video. So... A lot of complex rules here, and the rules are different depending on countries, so we'll go through a bunch of other different countries. So World Triathlon, what used to be called the International Triathlon Union, that's the international governing body for the sport, recently renamed. They have slightly simpler rules where they just say, well, if it's below 16 degrees Celsius, then you have to wear a wetsuit. And they have uh, more complex rules for how you adjust the swim. So what is the water temperature? How far is the swim? And what do we bring it down to? Triathlon Australia have rules that basically look the same as British triathlon. It changes a bit in how hot you can have the water before wetsuits are banned. But it's that 14, 15, 16, the same as British triathlon. For it counts as a cold swim. USA triathlon, USAT, do different because they work in Fahrenheit and as far as I can tell there isn't a, a point where wetsuits become mandatory for USA triathlon. I had a quick look at the rules and I couldn't necessarily see that um, but generally anything below 78 degrees Fahrenheit you can wear a wetsuit and in fact if you want up to 84 degrees Fahrenheit you can still wear a wetsuit it'll just make you ineligible for winning your age group. And again, USA Triathlon have a bunch of rules about how the swim will be shortened if it's within a certain temperature. Okay, that's what we're dealing with. So then what do we do about it? Well, let's start by looking at the techniques. And one technique is just long-term acclimatization. So get the body used to swimming in really cold water. And that unfortunately means just getting in the lake repeatedly and just being uncomfortable and just doing a bit when the lake near me first opens at the season some people they just come down they get in the lake in there they put their wetsuit on they get in the lake and they just stay in the bay area they don't do any swimming they just get their body used to being really cold and then maybe the week after they do a bit of swimming and they just gradually build up but they get the body used to that kind of temperature and it acclimatizes over time. We can also do a similar thing by, for example, having really cold showers. You have a cold shower every day. Again, you will get the body used to being in cold water. There's also acclimatization on the day itself. 
So be don't just jump in and go for a swim if it's really cold because you'll get that cold water shock. So get in nice and slowly, allow it to get your feet in then get up to the point where it comes in through the back of your wetsuit via the zip and then maybe splash some cold water on your face, gradually get it down up to your neck and put your head in really slowly, really gently. Just allow yourself to get used to it before you start swimming because if you go in and you start swimming the cold water will get to you you'll have a panic attack you'll freak out if you get in there and just take it slow until you feel comfortable cold but comfortable then you will have a much better time there's also some dry land stuff we can do so we could do a warm-up before getting in the swim some races don't give you a chance to get in the water and acclimatize beforehand so maybe a dry land warm-up can work there or if you've got some like cold water in a bottle just pouring that down the back of your neck and over your face can be useful as well so where possible, just try and get acclimatized slowly to the water and do that both on the day and over a long period of time. If not, there are those dry land things we can do and maybe even take cold showers at home as well. So those are some techniques. Now let's look at what equipment we can use as well. And probably if, if it's a cold water, then it's probably wetsuit mandatory. So you want a, a nice nice tight fitting warm triathlon wetsuit the triathlon wetsuits tend to have different thicknesses so for example it's really thin around the shoulders to give us that mobility for when we're swimming i'm sure you know what swimming is and tends to be a bit more padded around the chest and on the legs that gives us the buoyancy but it also helps to keep a bit of warmth in i might not be holding this high enough so yeah we've got Thin material here in the chest and uh, it gets a bit thicker sorry in the shoulder and then it's a bit thicker in the chest now you can get standard wetsuits or you can get thermal wetsuits thermal wetsuits have more insulation so that it might be thicker they might have a different kind of kind of fleece lining on the inside to help keep warmth in so if you're going to be doing a lot of cold water stuff it's worth getting the thermal version or if you just get cold really easily, you might want to look at the thermal version. Or you can also add layers underneath. So if you're in a race, then you're probably going to have your tri suit underneath your wetsuit. But you can also do this when you're just swimming. When you're doing your training swims, just put some kind of base layer, like a tri suit or a tri top, around you to keep some of the extra warmth in. Or you can even get special neoprene base layers. This is one I've got. It's a, I think it's adds two mil, and it's just it's a vest, so it doesn't restrict your shoulder mobility at all. Now, uh, full disclosure, this only arrived yesterday, so I haven't tried it, and it is super hard to get on. So I'm going to take it to the lake tonight, and if there's anything important, I will probably cut to that right now and report back. The vest was really nice. Um, it's quite uncomfortable to wear because it's so tight and so hard to get on, but it did keep my core nice and toasty, so I'll give that a thumbs up as well. Uh, but this should hopefully add more warmth than my tri suit does because the tri suit's really, really thin material, whereas this is made of 2mm neoprene. Important thing to note that this, this is 2mm of neoprene. And the chest area on my wetsuit, which is a non-thermal wetsuit, is four millimeters. You can do the maths, that makes six millimeters, and the race legal means five millimeters or less. So actually in a race situation, you probably couldn't wear this with the wetsuit because that would make it six mil and therefore it wouldn't be race legal. But if you're just swimming outside of a race situation or, or you're not worried about being disqualified because you're never gonna win your age group anyway then you might want to stick one of these vests in to see if that keeps you any warmer so then you've got hands and feet so you could get some of these swim socks now and swim socks are race legal if wetsuits are mandatory so 
you can sometimes wear them if wetsuits are optional then you're not allowed to wear swim socks but again these are really useful for the start of the season where it's super cold and you can just um, stick them on it keeps your feet a bit warmer nice makes it a lot easier to get in i've also got this nice grippy bit so a lot of the time if you're walking down to the lake or the sea under some rocks it gives you a bit of protection there they're not like a wetsuit though where it really clings to your skin there is a bit of room in there and so you end up having uh they fill with water and when you take them off you end up having to drain them i don't find it a big problem when i'm swimming but it, it clearly is a thing that happens they fill with water and you drain them and in the end there's um yeah it, it's a bit annoying um so that's the swim socks then gloves gloves are never race legal so again you only really use these in training when it's super cold um, but again these are just really nice for keeping your hands warm might even i've seen a few people suggest they're quite nice on the bike because they're neoprene so if it's raining could be good um, the annoying the, so these are good some people said these fill with water i haven't really noticed that they've been fine for me but the thing is it's really hard to dry them because like with a wetsuit to dry it you turn it inside out and it's really hard to turn these gloves inside out i can't get the fingers fully inside out i just have to hope that they dry with the glove half turned inside out um, so again quite nice can't use them in a race then swim hats so normally we would wear one swim cap you could wear two and that's literally you just pull one swim cap on the latex or i'm not sure if they're latex or not um, and then just pull another one over the top and just having that second layer will just add that bit more insulation so that's a really easy technique to go especially if you've got a swim cap you like i really like these hoop ones because they stay on my head better than other ones um, so if you get one from the race organizer which you will just put your preferred one on, put the race organizer one over the top, and suddenly you've got a warmer head. Doesn't protect your face, your face still gets cold, nothing really we can do about that, unfortunately. But if these aren't giving you enough warmth, then you could go for one of these neoprene caps. Now these are these are even warmer, they're they're quite thick, if you can see there, and they've got this nice, uh, nice fleece lining inside so these are quite nice obviously it doesn't protect your face the issue is that there's this strap because it's because it's got a nice fleece lining they need to be held in place so you have to stick it around there and this chafes my neck a lot pretty unpleasant so i don't know if this is for me because i yeah, really irritated my chin i could try vaselining it up haven't done yet maybe that's an answer um, but if you really want to keep your head warm I guess this is the gold standard now zone free do have a version that doesn't have that chin strap now it doesn't have the nice fleece lining um, because it just wouldn't stay on your head but it, it does have that nice thick neoprene so this is I think an intermediate if you're finding the chin strap really annoys you and you want more warmth than two swim caps stick uh get one of these and stick your swim cap over the top now again full disclosure this only arrived yesterday I'm gonna try a little late today and if it doesn't work i will cut to a video of me saying it doesn't work right now okay quick update down here at the lake a hat stayed on my head so that was great i don't know if it was much warmer than wearing two swim caps so definitely not as warm as the one the chin strap but it was okay it stayed on my head which was a big thing okay so there you go that's what cold water for triathlon looks like you want to make sure you're acclimatized both in the long term so repeatedly putting yourself in the cold water and trying to acclimatize on the day if you can do a dry land warm-up if you can't and then in terms of equipment, you might want to stick some layers under your wetsuit. You might want a thermal wetsuit. And when you're allowed to, you might want things like gloves and extra hats and socks. Hopefully that was useful. If so, please give this video a thumbs up. And if you do a lot of triathlon, then hit the subscribe button because that's what my channel is all about. And I would love to see you in another video.